Okay, so in the last class we had started with torque. Torque is the rotational analog of force. So we had seen, we had done this derivation, and we had come to the conclusion that torque is actually the cross product of dipole moment and electric field. And dipole moment is what? What is dipole moment, Samia? Formula of dipole moment, Samia. Dream. Dipole moment, it's in front of you only on the screen, it's there. Formula of dipole moment. Yes, Samia. K2A. Q, Q multiplied Q. by Q, Q multiplied by 2A. That is the dipole moment. Uh, yes, 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 uh, it is Q multiplied by 2A. That is the charge magnitude of any one of the charges multiplied by the separation between the two charges. Whatever charges is there that we usually take by convention as 2A. So that gives us the dipole moment. Electric field we have already studied. Electric field is the space or, around the charge where electrical phenomena or electrical properties can be experienced. Now, the cross product of both of these quantities, dipole moment and electric field, this gives us the quantity torque, P cross E. All right, so we didn't do any question on it. Let's start with the question. Let's complete a question so that torque topic gets over. Okay, so start noting down the question and start trying it also yourself. An easy question I'm giving you, direct formula based question. So the electric field is given to you 10 Newton per coulomb. This is the electric field given. Now a dipole has been placed. The positive charge is plus 2 milli coulomb and the negative charge is minus 2 milli coulomb. Separation between the charges is 3 millimeters. You can calculate the dipole moment from this. E is given and sine theta for sine theta take theta as 60 degree. Now try the question. Quickly, all of you try to send the answer. Formula is P E sine theta. P you can calculate from Q multiplied by 2A. That will give you P E from here, sine theta from here. Take two minutes, try, then we'll discuss.
not milli it's uh, not micro it's milli coulomb two micro coulomb is different milli means 10 to the power minus 3 so multiply charges with 10 to the power minus 3 then solve Okay, last one minute. Try quickly, all of you. Whatever answers you're getting, at least submit it. Then we'll discuss it. So you can analyze your mistake. Ma'am, can you explain? Uh, yes, let's discuss it now. See, uh, dipole is given to you. How you are able to identify that this is a dipole? Because positive and negative charges are there. Both have the same magnitude, 2 millicoulomb, 2 millicoulomb. And both of them have the opposite sign, plus and minus. So see, for calculation of torque, what do we require? Torque is equal to P cross E, means P E sine theta. Now, we don't know P because P is not directly given to you, but we have studied dipole moment is what? Charge multiplied by the separation between the charges. Now, see, charge is given to you 2 millicoulombs. 2 into 10 to the power minus 3. Good, Fahad. It will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 because charge is what? 2 millicoulombs. This is not the SI unit of charge. No, SI unit of charge is what? Coulomb. So this becomes 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 Coulomb. This is the charge. And the separation is what? Separation is 3 millimeters. So I'll again convert this into meters because millimeters is also not the SI unit. So this becomes 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Now I have Q and I, I have A. P will be what? Charge means Q, 2 into 10 to the power minus 3, multiplied by 2A. That is the separation between charges. 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. So P gives 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb meter. We have dipole moment now. Electric field is what? What is the electric field, Reem? 10. 10. 10 Newton per coulomb. And sine theta is what basically it's sine 60 degrees now we have all the three quantities with us and sine 60 is also what sine 60 is root 3 by 2 we just have to take the product of all these torque will be p so p is 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 p e then we have 10 sine theta is root 3 by 2 so this 2 cancels this 6 and this is 3 Torque is 3 root 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton meter. Clear to all of you now? Yes, yes Reem? Yes. Right. Others? What about others? Samya, Madiha? All right. So note down the solution. Then we'll do electric field lines.
Uh, that's the value for her. See, we have certain values, no? Like cos 90 is 0, uh, cos 30 degrees root 3 by 2. Similarly, sine 30 is half, sine 60 is root 3 by 2. That is all the trigonometry values which you, you should remember. Okay. So if you don't remember, then look into your uh, 10 standards NCRT or something from internet. There you have a table where you can learn all these values. Write it done when you all have written. Ten to the power uh, minus six, where? This is ten to the power minus six, but with the, we multiply it with this ten also, no? So that becomes ten to the power minus five. Are you asking about this? Okay, so this is 10 to the power minus 6, but we have this additional E's value also, no? Electric field was 10. That's why it came out to be 10 to the power minus 5. Now see, electric field lines are what? Electric field, you have studied. Electric field, a single charge is there. It will exhibit certain properties, certain phenomena. It will exhibit exhibit that shows us that electric uh, forces exist so that field we call it as electric field but uh, talking about uh, the electric field lines just pictorial way to represent it if you have electric fields going with electric field is present and how will you represent it electric field is a certain space so we have certain symmetrical or pictorial representation of electric field lines fields which we call as the electric field lines so these are the basic geometric or pictorial representation representation of electric field. Just to represent electric field, we have electric field line. So basically these are continuous curves. These are continuous curves in this manner. These are electric field lines. Now, how do we get the direction of electric field on it? If you simply put a tangent on it, this will give you the direction of electric field. So direction of electric field is given by a tangent on the electric field line. So uh, this is one the first property of electric field lines. If you talk about the properties, this is the first property that electric field lines, these are continuous curves and the direction of electric field is given by a tangent drop. If you drop a tangent, whatever is the direction of the tangent, that will be the direction of electric field. But remember, if I take two electric fields which are coinciding, okay, let's take it in this manner. Uh, I have taken this electric field this is one electric field that I've taken whose tangent is this. All right. Another electric field I have taken in this manner. Whose tangent is what? Whose tangent is this. Now what is happening? At this particular point A, this point A, let's say this point A, just make a note and write it. You are seeing what? There are 
electric field lines at the same point a you are having two directions one for one curve other for the other curve you are having tangent means it will be on the same line tangent means uh, if you are having a circle and you drop a perpendicular on it this we call as a tangent so electric field lines are continuous curves so a tangent drop on it will give you direction of electric field line so that is a straight line only that is correct that's a straight line now see if this orange one is a electric uh, field uh, curve uh, means electric field line it is giving the direction in this manner electric field then this blue line this is the electric field curve electric field line curve which is giving the direction in this manner but if you see they both of them are intersecting at that intersection point they are giving you two directions of electric field can a single charge be having two directions of electric field at a single point you cannot have two directions of anything no the way if you have all have studied in your fluid uh, mechanics chapter in class 11th there you must have studied streamline flow uh, laminar flow turbulent flow there you must have studied two streamlines cannot intersect because at that point you will have two direct different directions of the motion of the fluid that is a similar case if you are able to recall it this is a similar case two electric field lines are crossing at the intersecting point no they are having two different directions and at a single point two different directions are not possible it means two electric field lines can never cross each other you will never see such a case because at point of intersection there will be two directions of electric field there will be two directions of electric field which is physically not possible which is physically not possible this is physically not possible so this is uh, the first property regarding the tangent now electric field lines have one more property that is helpful to identify and you can just look at it and identify if you see such a scenario means at one point electric field lines are together at the other point electric field lines are far apart from each other in this manner this is let's say this is region 1 let's say this is region 2 these are electric field lines these are curves and these are in one region electric field lines are closer in region 1 and these are far apart in region 2 now if electric field lines are closer that shows that electric field is stronger stronger electric field and if they are far apart that shows weaker electric field so this property is helpful when you have electric fields with you electric field you have to identify you have to analyze if electric field lines are kept closer it means that shows that electric field is stronger the strength is very high and if they are kept far apart farther farther from each other that shows that electric field is weak in that region weaker electric field exists all right so this is the second property now the third property third property is easy it says that for positive charge electric field lines move away means in this manner and for negative charge electric field lines move towards the body move towards the charge in this manner so if positive and negative charges are kept together positive and negative charges what will happen electric field lines for positive charge it will be moving away from the charge in this manner and for the negative charge all those will come towards it if two are kept together now if you look at this figure which i have drawn where positive and negative charges are kept what does it look like that electric field lines electric field lines originate from a positive charge 
it's looking like no, they are originating from positive charge and terminating at the negative charge. Reason is that because electric field lines are moving away for positive charge and for negative charge, electric field lines are moving towards the charge. So it appears as if electric field lines are originating from the positive charge and terminating at the negative charge. From the positive charge and terminating the negative charge it it appears in this manner positive line connects negative charges correct positive that's why we have the properties of attraction if two charges uh, these are unlike that's why they attract this this property is proved because of electric field lines only so positive lines are connecting the negative lines and also they are continuous curves they are continuous curves it means you will never see dotted 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 electric field lines what you see you see a complete curve always now see if positive and negative are kept together the way i have shown you what does it show if two unlike charges are kept together means positive and negative they'll exert no there's a neutral point that will lie the neutral point this shows that they attract uh, the attraction property is shown which uh, which you are asking for so electric field lines contract longitudinally electric field lines contract longitudinally contract longitudinally means they appear to attract each other the reason is that only positive charges um, move away the electric field lines from them and negative char charges attract the electric field lines towards them they terminate on it do one thing all of you let's revise these five points first then rest of the property will first note it down then we'll do so first property was what electric field lines are basically continuous curves tangent on it gives the direction of it second thing in this only the two field lines cannot intersect because it will be having two directions at the same point which is not possible second point was wherever you see closer electric field lines that shows stronger electric fields and wherever you see far away far away electric field lines that shows weaker electric field so electric field lines also give you the strength for positive charges electric field lines move away for negative charges electric field lines move towards the charge that's why electric field lines appear to look what that electric field lines originate from positive charges and negative terminate at the negative charges and they are continuous curve and this shows that electric fields contract longitudinally means this explains attraction explains attraction so first note down these point look at them revise it if you have any doubts let me know and then we'll do the other properties because five more properties are there
Uh, yes, intersection cannot happen. If it happens, the reason is that if you assume that intersection is happening, then there will be two directions. That is not possible. So it means intersection will only not happen. This diagram that I've drawn, this doesn't exist. Till here, Fahad, or uh, this portion? Second property, all right, this. Done for us. Should I scroll it down?
now let's discuss some more properties of electric field lines so um few we have discussed okay one more property uh, that is there if like charges are there so if like charges are there instead of getting attracted they will be repelled so in this manner because both for both the like charges electric field lines moving away or had it been a negative charge so for both of them electric field lines would have been coming towards so at a point this will be a point where no electric field line will so this we say that electric field lines exert lateral pressure on each other which shows that they they repel each other so electric field lines they exert lateral pressure on each other which explains repulsion of like charges now this point that i am talking to you this point where no electric field line moves this point is called as a neutral point this point is known as a neutral point and no electric field lines flows through it no electric field line flows through this through the neutral point no electric electric field lines uh the eighth property is that if you have a conductor with you for example if i give you this conductor this is a conductor conductors are those devices that allow a uh, which one for uh, okay the previous one neutral point see uh, what happens in case of neutral point sixth point okay sixth point is lateral pressure see lateral pressure and longitudinal com compression this both of these point i'll explain you once again if positive and negative charges are there let me raise these lines if positive and negative charges are there then what will happen from the positive to the negative electric field lines will flow so this shows what that they are contracting longitudinally means in this manner they are expanding this we call it as a longitudinal contraction because you see electric field lines will move in this manner for positive to negative in this manner so they are just contracting longitudinally this explain you why charges attract the reason is this only because electric field lines Uh, originate from the positive charge and appear to terminate from it regarding the second point a sixth point see for positive charge this will be the direction of flow of charges this will be the direction of flow of charges uh, electric field lines from the positive charge but if electric field lines are moving in this manner they are going away from each other they won't be coinciding with them see they cannot coincide and they both of them are moving in the same direction so this pressure that is generated in this manner because of the movement of electric field lines away we call it as lateral pressure so this is longitudinal contraction and this is lateral pressure it's just a term that you should remember theoretically otherwise this is of no use to you what you should remember is whether electric field lines are moving away for charges or moving towards it because in the questions also uh, you will be getting it in this manner that uh, electric field lines would be drawn and it will ask you whether electric field lines are drawn correctly or not so there also you have to identify whether electric field lines are drawn correctly for that you should remember this property regarding fifth and sixth one electric field lines contract longitudinally because of attraction and they exert lateral pressure on each other in this manner which explains repulsion of charges uh, now if a conductor is is it clear is this clear to all of you yes ma'am yes ma'am oh now if you have a conductor and electric field lines are flowing so what happens on the surface of this conductor no electric field lines are perpendicular to it in this manner electric field lines lie perpendicular to it 
in this manner and remember electric field lines do not penetrate the conductor it doesn't happen that electric field line will come it will go inside the conductor and then come out it can never happen remember electric field lines never go inside the conductor that's why electric field inside a conductor is always zero and when we will do uh, the electric field for a sphere conducting sphere there we will see that electric field is zero inside the sphere whereas electric field had some value you for the surface and the outside point but for inside it was zero the reason is that electric field lines do not move into the conductor and if they do not move into the conductor there won't be any electric field so electric field lines just lie perpendicular to it means in this manner here the end they do not uh, what do we say uh, we do they do not move into the conductor here they have the end so for example this acts basically like a negative charge and then electric field line for this side it can move in this manner but not within this so it will make angle of 90 degrees all these are making an angle of 90 degrees so if you have a conductor so most probably these are negative charges and these are positive if the conductor has negative charge developed or if the conductor has positive charge developed outside residing outside this is the manner of electric field that you get remember electric field lines do not move inside the conductor i'll write down this point electric field lines do not penetrate into the conductor because this point is helpful for your derivations derivation of electric field due to sphere hollow conducting sphere or a solid conducting sphere electric field lines do not penetrate into the conductor and lie perpendicular on the surface of this is the one uh, one last point uh, that is used for your numericals mostly one last point in case of electric field lines if you have positive charge no let's say q1 is a charge and q2 these are two charges all right now what will happen as i have told you electric field lines will move away because both are like charges but where does the neutral point lie if i say both of the charges are identical then neutral point will definitely lie in the center but if i say both the charges are an identical it can happen no positive charges can exist with different different magnitudes if i say for example q two has greater magnitude than q1 so remember neutral point lies towards the charge with lesser magnitude so which of them has lesser magnitude q1 or q2 which q1 one? q1 so neutral point yes q1 so this will be somewhere near here so here no electric field line will flow because there is a neutral point in this manner electric field lines will flow for positive charge for q2 and in this manner for q1 the electric field lines will cover a greater distance for q2 reason is that electric field lines not electric field lines majorly neutral point we are talking about the neutral point neutral point lies near the charge of lesser magnitude all right so these are the properties of electric field lines Sixth, seventh, we have revised seventh where no electric field line flows. You call it as a neutral point. In neutral point, net electric force is zero. Net electric field is zero. Then you have conductor for conductors. Electric field lines do not move into the conductor. They just lie on it, making an angle of ninety degree. And the last point that neutral point will lie slightly towards the charge having the lesser magnitude. So note down these points as well.
see the question says what this is one additional uh, question that is left uh, in this uh, lesson then electric electrons or charges are placed in electric field so it says that a proton and an electron these are placed at rest near the positive and negative plates you have to calculate the time taken by proton and you have to calculate the time taken by electron to reach the opposite end see electric field lines what we have studied move from positive to the negative means this will be the direction of electric field lines all over from the positive to the negative from the positive to the negative so electron is there at this negative plate and proton is there at the positive plate so proton will move there and electron will come downwards this is the case given to you now it is asking you to calculate the time see uh, first if you remember we have done the definition of electric field as force per unit charge force experienced by the charge so force is f so e is equal to what f by q if e is equal to f by q then your force will be what q multiplied by e so here force will be q multiplied by e now let's talk about electrons only regarding electrons what are the or let's talk about protons first let's consider protons protons are moving from this end to towards this end in this manner so force will be what e multiplied by capital e because charge on a proton and charge on electron is same if you remember madhya what was the electronic charge charge on a single electron madhya Refer. check again. Check again. Is this typing error or you've written in wrong? Samia? One point six into ten raised to minus nineteen. Perfect. See, this is the answer. One point six into ten to the power minus nineteen coulomb. Don't forget this because see, electronic charge won't be given you in your questions. You have to remember this, and it is utilized till semiconductors. Means in the last till the last chapter, E will be written everywhere. So you have to convert it. So don't forget this. One point six into ten to the power minus nineteen. Coulombs. This much charge is present in proton and electron. So F is equal to E. Acceleration is what? Force by mass. So it will be force on proton divided by mass of proton. So it will be E E divided by m p. This is the force. Now, what is the initial velocity? Initial velocity is zero because all are at rest. It is given in the question that electrons and protons are placed at rest. It means initial velocity is zero. We have the acceleration with us E E by m p. distance that has to be covered is what small d it is given to you now if you use this equation s is equal to ut plus half a t square uh this is t square t square see s this is what this will be zero why because u is zero it will be s which is equal to d so d is equal to half acceleration is what e e by mp this is acceleration and tp square means time taken by the proton so what is the time taken by the proton time taken by the proton will be 2 mp d divided by e e since it is square it will be under root of No, not one point nine. Madhya, it's one point six only. If you have a negative charge with you, you can add a negative sign minus one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen. And if you have positive charge, then you can write plus one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen. So this is the time taken by the proton. Similarly, if you have electron, no need to repeat the calculation. Q is a constant, so two will be there. Instead of mass of proton, you will get the mass of electron. The rest of the things will be the Same. So these will be the time periods. All right. So note down this question as well. Then we'll begin with electric flux. Gauss theorem. Ma'am. Yes. 
Why are we taking P square? Here? Down. Yes, over here. Uh, T P square. This. Yes. See, uh, uniform acceleration equations, equations of motion. If you remember, V is equal to U plus A T V square minus U square is equal to 2 A S. One of the equations was U T plus half A T square. That's why we have written T square. T P means time taken by proton. Square of it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the distance that we have to cover is what? See, the distance that proton has to cover is this much to reach the opposite plate. And the distance that electron has to cover is also this much towards this plate. And what is this distance giving? This is, distance is already given to us as small t. That's why we have taken s is equal to t. The distance traveled. Displacement, or you can say the displacement in the uniform motion equations. Can you scroll over down?
silakan. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Alright, so let's start with electric flux. Let's see the basics of electric flux questions and all we'll do in the next class. Now, uh, electric flux regarding electric flux, you have to understand this will uh, be understood with the help of electric field lines only. That's why we have done electric field lines prior to electric flux. See, if I give you a surface, this is a two dimensional surface. All right, I say electric, these are four electric field lines are passing from this surface. If these electric field lines are perpendicular on the surface, means making an angle of 90 degree on the surface, making an angle of 90 degree, then count the number of electric field lines that is only known as electric flux so electric flux is represented through the symbol phi circle with a cross line slanting line phi what will phi be one two three four so phi will be four so number of electric field lines that are crossing an area perpendicularly or normally. Normally, we use the term for perpendicular, to show perpendicular. So, electric field lines are what? Uh, electric flux is what? Electric flux means number of field lines that are passing through an area perpendicularly or normally. I'll write it down. Number of electric Field lines crossing an area normally. Whenever I use the term normally, it means perpendicularly. So it is crossing it perpendicularly. Mm -hmm. So number of field lines, num all just count the number of field lines. But the condition is that it has to be normal. If your angle is 90 degree, then only you consider it under the calculation of electric flux. For example, if I say, if I give you a surface, let's say this is a surface. This is electric field line. This is a surface with surface area S. Let's say S is the surface area e is the electric field all right now it is making some random angle with the plane it's not making an angle of 90 degree so what you have to do put or drop a perpendicular on it to check it so let's drop a perpendicular if we drop a perpendicular this will be the perpendicular let's say n cap this perpendicular dropped on the surface is called as the area vector. This is known as the area vector. Area vector is simply perpendicular dropped on the surface. Now, electric field line is making an angle with this area vector. Let's call it theta. So, theta is the angle between electric field and the area vector and the area vector all right so now electric field line is making an angle theta with the area vector remember this theta i have specified this angle because angle is not taken with the plane and electric field if this is the electric field this angle is not considered this angle between the electric field line and electric field and the plane surface this is not considered if you drop a perpendicular this angle is now considered this angle the angle between the electric field and the 
perpendicular drop that is the area vector this angle is not considered so never consider the angle between the electric field and the plane if electric fields angle with the plane is given subtract it from 90 degree but get the angle between the electric field and the area vector only so how is the flux given flux is given by dot product of electric field and surface area this is your electric flux s is the uh, where this is, s is the surface area e is the electric field this was a plane surface given now dot product how do we write if anybody has forgotten take the magnitude of the first vector take the magnitude of second vector and write cos theta to it in case of cross product which we discussed in the last class if you remember on uh, tuesday we have discussed it if you have cross product like torque p cross e then you take the magnitude of first take the magnitude of second and put sin theta in case of dot product you take the magnitude of first take the magnitude of second and multiply it with cos theta so it becomes es cos theta this is your electric flux right now and always remember theta is what theta is the angle between the electric field and area vector if this angle is not given to you somehow calculate this angle then see some clues some hint some data must be given in the question that will help you to calculate this angle but do not consider any other angle and regarding the direction of area vector see if i take a plane surface if i drop a perpendicular to it it necessarily needs need not to be in the center of the sheet if i drop a perpendicular at the edge or if i drop a perpendicular at this edge or just adjacent to it all these are actually making what angle of 90 degree with this plane sheet so direction of area vector for a plane surface is same as that of every point even if i take this point area vector will be what this can you see all the area vectors are having the same direction and pointing towards the up, up pointing upwards it means if you take any surface my voice is not audible to you all it's audible fahad i think it's your internet connection because it's audible to the rest of them just check once just check your internet and if it's still lagging that let me know i think he's having some internet issues all right so area vector is what see if i have a plane surface with me this is a plane surface if i drop a perpendicular here it is pointing in this manner or let's take it in this manner now it's fine okay so that must be internet issue see i have taken a sheet and i have taken electric vector in this manner then i have taken area vector here then i have taken area vector here i have taken area vector here if i take area vectors at any point no on this sheet it will point in the same direction only means if i talk about this example all of the area vectors are pointing upwards so this does not need it means you don't need to take it at the center take it any point it's just that it has to be perpendicular so direction of area vector for a plane is not curved surface i'm not talking about curved surface so direction of area vector for a plane surface is same at every point all right so note it down i'm repeating once again what is meant by electric flux all the electric field lines that are passing through a surface area normally we consider those electric field lines so if four electric field lines are uh, passing through a plane area making an angle of 90 degree so electric flux will be four whatever is a number of field line put it as electric flux if you know other quantities like area vector you know the surface area you know the angle between area vector and surface area then electric field and area vector then 
put it as phi is equal to e dot s. Phi is equal to what? E s cos theta, where theta is the angle between electric field and the area vector. Area vector is what? Just a perpendicular drop to it. And direction of area vector will be the same at every point for a plane surface. Curved surface has a different story that we'll discuss, but this is valid for a plane surface. So note it down. Ma'am, is electric flux vector or scalar? Electric flux, see, electric flux is with uh, what kind of quantity? This is having no direction. Means we are just writing electric field lines crossing per unit area. So this is also a scalar quantity. So you don't need to consider all the direction. I'll write down this point only. Okay, one more thing, one more thing. By looking at this formula, can you tell me the SI unit? SI unit of it. Electric field, you know. Surface area, you know. So what should be the SI unit? All of you try this. What will be the SI unit? Let me know. Electric field's SI unit you are constantly using. Surface area, you know. Yes, anyone? What is the SI unit of, uh, yes, voltmeter is correct, Reem. But apart from voltmeter, if you, uh, Reem, you only tell me, what is the SI unit of electric field? Reem? SI unit of electric field is not volts. Uh, yes, Fahad is right. Volt is the SI unit of voltage. We have not even discussed volt. Volt per meter, I have told you. Volt per meter is there. With that, volt meter has come. One more. See, Fahad is right. Newton meter square per coulomb. By electric fields, SI unit is what? Newton per coulomb. Newton per coulomb. And surface area is what? Meter square. So SI unit becomes Newton meter square per Coulomb. And Rheem is also right. Other unit and the other SI unit is volt meter. So by volt meter that we'll see in potential, the next chapter. There you have a relation between electric field and potential. So clear, Samya, it's a scalar quantity, so it has no direction. Yes, ma'am. Also, ma'am, if um, many fields are given, so how would we count each and every one of them? No, see, uh, questions do not come in that form because obviously it's not possible. And this was just an example. So I gave you four lines. Mainly you have to solve questions through this formula only. This formula and one theorem is there, Gauss theorem, which you must have heard of. With the help of that and this formula only you will calculate. Electric field and surface area. Because calculation of electric field lines, each and every field line is not possible. And it's not even, it won't be even given you in the question. So if it's in this manner, fewer lines are like this, four, five, six, then count and write. Otherwise, use the formula, mathematical formula. Clear? Yes.
Rifat, uh, Rifat, is it clear to you? Yes, ma'am. If you're having any doubts, just let me know. Done? Written all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What about others? Fahad, Madiha? Done? Done, ma'am. All right, all right. So I'm stopping here today. Okay, Fahad, okay. So let's stop here today. Revise electric flux and come. Okay, because your next topic is Gauss theorem only. So that is related.